Hey everybody, have you read any good books lately? I have, and reading is one of the things that I have been doing in an attempt to set some boundaries in my life, and the reading has been taking place of watching a lot of television. And it's funny, since I got my Roku, since I stopped the cable service and went to just the Roku, I don't even really watch a lot of TV. I'll watch like some retro game shows once in a while and some people that I follow on YouTube, but I really, I rare, rarely turn my television on these days and I've picked up the habit of reading. And I recently read this book, Christmas Week, and I got this book as a Christmas gift and I finished it today. Now I did a video a few months ago um, when I started really reading, um, you know, consistently, um, talking about how I started going back to the local library and taking out books. Yeah, and I'm really enjoying this. So that is a boundary, excuse me, scratch my nose, that I'm doing with my time. But after I talk to you about these books and do a little review on them, I'm going to talk to you about setting boundaries in other ways of your life, just not TV time. So this first book, I bought it at Ollie's when I was um, finishing up my Christmas shopping. It's called The Santa Suit, and it's, um, the author is Mary Kay Andrews. And this was... It was a cute little book. It was about a woman that bought an old farmhouse and um, it needed some renovations and the people that sold the house, the people that owned the house previously, um, left everything in the house for whatever reason. And in the bedroom was a Santa Claus suit and she took it out of a box and she was looking through the Santa suit and in the pocket was a note and it was written like in the 40s, maybe early 50s. And um, the little girl that wrote it, she had a request for Santa Claus to bring back her dad from the war. And this woman that bought the house in the, in the book um, she was so touched by the note that she found in the Santa suit that she went out on a like a mission to see if she could find the author. And in her search, she found family members of the girl that wrote the book and ended up reuniting them. And she fell in love with the realtor, the, you know, the guy that sold the house and it was just a cute story. There was, so, the Santa suit. Um, if you're looking for a cute book, there's one for you. And then I got this for the love of friends. I got this as a Christmas gift with a candle and a bottle of wine and a nice um, uh, throw or blanket. And I finished the book. I burned the candle. I used the blanket and I finished the bottle of wine too. So just to let you know. Anyways, this book is by Sarah Goodman Confino. Confino. And it is about this girl, this woman. I think she's 32 years old. She is the bridesmaid in five different weddings. And she struggled with romantic relationships all her life. Um, the weddings that she was in, the bridesmaids were a little uppity where she um, isn't or wasn't and wasn't into, you know, getting her hair done or the fake eyelashes. And she started um, an online blog where she would basically complain about these weddings um, and um, she would call the brides bridezillas and just talking you know in a bad way basically about the wedding parties and the brides and um, it went viral it went viral and all kinds of people read it including the brides and the bridesmaids 
and um, long story short, the blog that she wrote in her suffering through all these um, horror stories and being bridesmaids turned out to um, show her a side of herself that she didn't realize was hurting people and in that she mended a way about herself she mended relationships with people and that sort of thing and she ended up um, I think dropping out of two of the weddings one of them the bride asked her not to be in the wedding anymore because of what she did with the online blog um, and the other ones turned out to be really nice and she realized that the other bridesmaids weren't really the bad people she was just struggling with something internally of herself so um, it turned out to be what everybody viewed as a bad thing this online blog turned out to be a good thing for her um, like a self-realization so yeah so that was two good books and the next book I have that I'm going to read is by Nicholas Sparks it's called The Lucky One I read some of his books um, a few years ago when I was more into reading but yeah so that is a boundary that I've been doing um, to occupy my time at home a little better than being glued to the TV since I got my Roku I have not watched the news at all so I've I've that boundary would you know eliminating the bad news that you see on on tv i have not watched the news i've heard the news like at work in residence rooms or in common areas but i don't really pay attention to it so again that's a boundary there with the tele uh, television i've um, worked on boundaries not just recently but the past couple years as far as balancing my work and my home um, life or time before I got sick with you know a couple years ago you all know I have a, I'm a heart condition before I had my heart attack I used to work a lot all the time overtime and if I wasn't working at my job putting in all the time I would take my work home and I would do a lot of my work at home and then when I had that event, I realized, you know, I had a wake up call as to what I'm doing with my life and how I'm not balancing it out. So I work 40 hours now. I always worked 40 hours before, but I would put in a lot of overtime. And I don't do that anymore. I don't. My work is always going to be there and my work does get done, but I leave work at the door. I don't bring it home with me. I don't physically bring work home with me. I try my best to not lay in bed at night and think of work or let thoughts of work take over because it's really, like I said, the work's always going to be there. I leave that situation at the door as I'm leaving. Also, any issues I might be having in my personal life, which right now I, by the grace of God and thank you, things are good. Things, I'm in a good place right now. I don't bring any worries if I have any at all or struggles to work I separate the two because anything that might be going on in mine or your personal life is not at work so there's that boundary that I've learned to set and maybe you need to learn to set that too it's two different situations two different situations and leave those situations at the door at the respective or respected door other personal boundaries that I've set as far as someone that I was dating I finally just realized that we're just not going to see eye to eye and the more you talk to a person that you're just not seeing eye to eye with or holding on to 
to somebody just to have somebody and you know it's not working out you need to set that boundary and let that situation go let it go because you know what there's someone out there that will bring you happiness and not sadness there's someone out there that will make you feel wanted in all situations in all aspects of the relationship and not just in one area another boundary that I'm trying to create for myself is to realize that certain people in my family might not agree with situations or not be happy with me because I won't see things their way or do things their way and that's okay because whether it's with me or you if someone is willing to cut you out of their life because it's their way or the highway or you won't see things their way well you know what you have a say in that situation too relationships aren't one-sided they're two-sided it's not a one-way street it's a two-way street and if someone just doesn't want to talk to me or dismiss me from their life because I won't do things their way. Well, that sounds like a little bit of control, doesn't it? It does to me. And I'm sorry. Things are a two-way street. They are. So if someone's willing to let you out of their life because you won't do things their way well I don't know give me a call when when you're feeling better about things right right yeah boundaries with your money my cell phone here's a thing and this is part of my frugal living when I bought my cell phone I bought it making payments on it because cell phones go anywhere from 600 up to some of them crazy almost two thousand dollars I will never buy a cell phone like that but I made payments on my phone and now when my phone bill used to be about ninety dollars a month my phone is paid off my cell phone bill is not actually it was ninety one dollars and sixty cents my cell phone bill now that my phone is paid off is $66 a month because I'm not paying for my cell phone bill anymore. I'm just straight out paying for um, whatever my plan is, unlimited texting, unlimited phone. And I don't plan on going and getting another phone. The phone that I'm, I have, which is what I'm recording this with, is perfectly fine. It does what it needs to do. And another way I keep my phone working really good is I clean out the storage. I clean out the memory. I get rid of any videos that are on there. I back my pictures up on, on Google Photos. And I just keep cleaning it out. And I don't use up all my memory. So there is a boundary there that I'm setting with my money where I'm realizing that the phone that I have paid off and paying at least $30 less a month is just fine. There's all kinds of boundaries that you can create, whether it's personal relationships, money, using your time more wisely, making healthy choices with your television, reading a book, or cutting out carbs and eating fruit, cutting an alcohol alcoholic beverages and just drinking fruit juices or water there's all kinds of boundaries you just have to want to make those positive changes positive changes are good so my boundaries like I said I've been shutting off the TV and reading more I think probably in the past four months I've read at least five or six books. Now, I can't get through a book in a week. I work full-time. 
I try to read a chapter in the morning or in the afternoon. Yeah. So, again, set boundaries. Set boundaries. You'll enjoy the difference that boundaries can make in your life. I made positive changes. Chances are there's some areas in your life that you make you need to make changes to. Right? Right. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.